Welcome to ESPN Speed World coverage of the Ralph UHRA Thunder Tour 1998 presented by Las Vegas. Coming to you from the Molson Thunderfest on Okanagan Lake in Kelowna, British Columbia. And what a beautiful setting this is in this Canadian resort town. To win here in Kelowna, you have to beat not only the other boats and drivers, you also have to beat the water. Hello, everybody. I'm John Nicholson. The pursuit of Dave Bill Walk and the Big Red Boat continues here at the Molson Thunderfest. And here, as much as any place else on the tour, water conditions really come into play. Now, close to shore, as you can see, it's pretty smooth. But out there on the course, it can get mighty rough. Uh, Lake Okanagan's got a lot of holes in it. People wonder what holes are. It's the gap between the waves. And here, they're fairly substantial, probably one to two feet deep. Imagine hitting a speed bump in your car at, say, just 30, how it would rattle your head. Well, we're hitting them at 180. So, yeah, the, the boat's got to be fast. You've got to beat the other boats, and you've got to beat this lake, and that's the challenge. While the water conditions could be rough, for one team, it was rough just getting here up and ready to go. Let's go to my partner, Steve Montgomery, for that story. A week ago in the Tri-Cities Columbia Cup, Dr. Ken Muscatel had one of his better races of recent seasons, but then got some bad news from partner Rick Campbell. They had broken one of the boat's main spars. That meant a trip back to Friday Harbor, a beautiful spot, but it's about 12 hours from there to here in Kelowna. Along the way, they did pick up a sponsor. They are now Team Yamaha Kelowna. And the good news is they are ready to go racing. They tell us they have one boat, one driver, and one motor. The addition of the U-14 gives us a good, strong field for the running of the Molson Thunderfest. Now, let's go to John for a recap of Heat 1A. It looked as if Mark Evans and the Pico American Dream had a golden opportunity for a win in Heat 1A. The only serious challenge likely to come from Miss Molson and Steve David. The water conditions came into play early. As we check the starting lineups, the Weber brothers, Mark and Mike, filling out Heat 1A. But look at the foreground here. There is the master tire. It did not get started. Pico with the good jump in lane three, Mark Evans. In lane two, Stephen David driving the Miss Molson. And on the inside, Mike Weber and the Carpenter Communications. We look from the O'Doul's eye in the sky and see that as they came around the first turn, first Stephen David in lane two closed it up on the Pico. And then Mike Weber on the inside also moving up on both David and Mark Evans in the Pico American dream later we get a look at things getting rough for Stephen David one of those holes that Steve David talked about pitched his boat right through the rooster tail of the Pico American dream and that could have been a disaster but the Miss Molson actually recovered pretty well Pico American dream averaging almost 139 miles an hour on the last of three laps and Mark Evans was the winner once again, going by Mark Weber, still sitting there in the master tire. Then Carpenter Communications, Mike Weber, managed to come in second because of Stephen David's difficulties. And Steve recovering, almost closed on him, but didn't quite get there. Finishing third in Heat 1A. Looking at the points, 400 for Pico American Dream, 300 for Carpenter Communications. A nice performance for the Mike and Lori Jones boat, and Steve talked with the winner. <laughs> Mark Evans with shoot speed. Where did that come from? I don't know. My crew kept telling me they were going to come up with something. Don't worry, we'll come up with something. And I dare, darn near didn't have a hold of the steering wheel for that one. Um, I'm, I just appreciate all the work the Pico crew's done. Man, oh man, I tell you what, heck of a run there. It's good to win a heat. Hopefully, let's get, get us some momentum going and uh, win the rest of them the rest of the day. Hey. Yeah. Things just never seem to get easier for Ken Muscatel and his team Yamaha Kelowna. After getting up and running, they found themselves in Heat 1B with the Budweiser, the favorite. The favorite, the challenge, Bud, Happy and Geronimo, and the third fast boat, Miss Kuha. But guess what? It ran with the top guys and in the end was not last. Here are the starting lineups. Miss Kuha, which is Kelowna Unlimited Hydroplane Association, also the Lumar window film with Nate Brown, the driver. Nate's in lane two, Bud on the inside. Look at Ken Muscatel at the start. A terrific job as the Appian Geronimo fell behind. From the O'Doul's eye in the sky, Budweiser tight to the buoys. And the Miss Kuha in lane two. Ken Muscatel way on the outside. You saw Mitch Evans run out of water there. He was between rooster tails. If he'd been able to hold his lane perfectly, John, he might have been okay. But that's tough to do in that first turn. He wound up getting it restarted, but Dave Vilwak averaging over 141 miles per hour in that first lap ran out to a pretty solid lead here in heat 1b bill walk has said this weekend in Kelowna we can be beat not in this one bill walk with his usual place first in heat 1b 
Nate Brown, Lumar window fill, Miss Kuha took second. And Ken Muscatel. Look out for Ken. He takes third despite all the difficulties. So the results show us that the Miss Budweiser picked up its accustomed 400 points. The Miss Kuha Lumar window film with 300. Happy and Geronimo last. Steve talked with a happy Dr. Ken. Ken, once you got it going, you had a great heat. Great start. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we got things broken all over the boat. I was looking through the mirrors to see what parts were flying off. The EGT actually came off in the, in the, in the race boat and hit me in the chest. <laughs> I'm on lap two. I was just trying to survive, and I knew we had a good start, and I could have squeezed more, but, you know, the idea was just to be there for the next one. Roger. Okay.